Hi, this is Phelps with Refuge Medical Training, and this is my wife, Hannah, and we're going to discuss wound packing. So, one of the first things you may want to do is actually pre-stage your gear. So if you see this package of gauze here, compressed gauze, I've already applied tape to the edge. You can take a piece of medical tape, duct tape, anything like that, place it just above the machine made notch, and if that notch is not super sharp, you may want to cut that with a knife, but don't penetrate all the way into the sealed area, okay? That makes it much easier to tear open, just like that. So when we're talking about wound packing, there's two different kinds, basically. There could be a huge gouge, something like this that you see in this wound cube, where there's a chunk taken out of the flesh. This could be from like a chainsaw or something like that. There's a lot of different types of gauze. This is compressed gauze, which is six ply. And then this is much cheaper gauze. You can find this at a Walmart or anything like that. But this type of gauze is equally as useful, especially if you're dealing with a uh, wound of this nature. You may just take this whole roll and pack it in there completely. Or if you're dealing with a small entry, it's easier to pack this in than this thick gauze. That being said, if you're trying to pack a wound that's a gouge like this, like a chainsaw injury, then you could take the time to feed it in there, but you can also just take a smaller roll like this and just stuff all of that in there. Now, this is an ETD, emergency trauma dressing. These come in different sizes, okay? This is a much smaller four inch ETD, which is common in smaller kits, like a compact kit. I would take this, apply the bandage over that and wrap it all the way around, maintaining pressure as I do. This allows me to keep pressure on the wound without having my hands tied up to keep manual pressure on the wound, okay? However, if you are dealing with a penetrating wound, something like a gunshot wound or an impaled object that's been removed, hopefully not by you, you should not do that, you wanna ideally start off with what I call the power knot. Just tie a little knot in the end of the gauze, and that allows you to drive it all the way to the source of the bleeding, okay? So you're gonna go in deep. As you do, you're, once you reach that point of bleeding, you're going to maintain pressure on that at all times. So I'll set this down here so you can see now. We're gonna do this push and replace method, okay? So as you push more gauze in, you will remove the other finger maintaining pressure with the new one. Pull off some extra gauze, as you see her doing here, and then pack that in with the other finger. Always maintaining pressure with that push and release. As you're filling this, you wanna make sure that you do this up, down, left, right, center type of pattern so that you fill the entire cavity of the void. You wanna maintain pressure on that side of bleeding, but you also don't wanna leave cavities in that void that not only that gauze could collapse into and relieve pressure, but also that would cause issues with um, infection or anything like that shortly thereafter. So with the gauze pad towards the side of the injury, you will wrap it around. That first wrap is mostly to hold it in place. The next wrap, you're gonna twist it and that puts a six inches of pressure into one inch, okay? Don't be afraid to pull it tight. Now these people, whoever you're working on, they're not gonna be pleased when you're doing this. It's important to talk to your casualty. Let them know that what you're doing is important for the, their survival. Once you reach the end, pull that up to where they can see it. There will be different types of ways to secure this. Some are just Velcro like this. Some also have plastic clips that run along here. If it has the plastic clips, only try to clip them on the outer edge of this. Don't try to wrap it around the entire bundle or they will break, okay? When you secure this, you don't want it on top of the side of the injury because physics being what it is, it will gradually lift pressure off that injury. And we wanna maintain pressure on top of that injury. So pull it past it, okay? Ideally, 90 degrees past the side of the injury. That is how you wound pack. And if you have access to combat gauze or any other hemostatic type of uh, impregnated gauze, you would wanna start with that. However, you do not need to fill the entire wound with that because this is only active at the source of bleeding. 
where that hemostatic agent is able to react to the blood. Now you can find this, ETDs, and many other medical supplies at refugemedical.com. Thank you very much. I hope you found this informative. Thank you.